Well, some form. <laughs> okay, so I use my graphing calculator, and let's use n derive, and let's look at the derivative of the sine function. Some of you know what it is, but let's at least observe it. So I'm going to go to y equals, clear that out, and I'm going to go ahead and clear it out just so if you want to do it with me. Okay, so up here I'm going to do the sine of x. I don't know why it's slow today, but it is. And then uh, down here, I'm going to have that little circle trace on. You know how to get there. You just arrow over here and just press it so you get to the circle trace. And I'm going to put the derivative of it. And you remember how to get the derivative using your calculator. To get the circle trace, we just arrow over here to all the way to the left and just press enter. We must always be in radian mode. Everything, all your answers on the exam will be in radian mode. So I'm starting with the regular line, I press enter, and it does a thick line, you could do that too. And then it does some shading above, shading below, and then the circle trace. And then remember how we're gonna do that, somebody was saying end drive, so it's math. And you remember where it is? Because I don't like an arrow down, but it's at H. So I remember where it is. And I, mine's in pretty print, but yours, yours might say end drive. And you're still going to have to say what variable, that's x. That's very important. And then I want the derivative of what's in y1. So it's bars. <clears throat> it's a y variable. We never do anything with the other ones, not in this class. It's a function. And I want y1. There are shortcuts if you have the new operating system. And we want to do it for every x value, not just one in particular. So let's put an x in there. And are you ready to graph? Now, I'm going to zoom, because I'm doing trig. I always zoom trig, which is 7. That's just what I do. You don't have to, but it really will help. Even if you're in the wrong mode, it will help. OK, here comes the derivative of the sine curve. You shouldn't be that surprised. Right? Yeah, it's the cosine. Are you in? Yeah, you have to do y1 over here. So you get y1. So bars, right? Yeah, bars. Function. Mm -hmm. And then y1. Mm -hmm. and comma then x. Comma. Yes, comma x, comma, comma x. I'm going to take this picture and put it over here. That's at the bottom, I believe. I don't know, you always forget. So if you do this, it's n to i. And you could have typed in sine of x. I mean, that was not bad to do, but some of the ones on the test were bad. X. Did you find your comma? I think it's at the bottom. Isn't it? Oh, no, it's at the top. It's above 7. And they move the comma around on these machines. It's different on the Inspire than it is on the 84. And just, that kind of drives me nuts, but anyway. Okay, how do I know that's really right? Here is my sine curve. Right? Here is the slope of the sine curve at its maximum. What's true about the slope? It's zero. So the cosine had better cross zero, or this function, its derivative should cross zero. Are the zeros matching up? I take the blue curve and I draw my tangent line here. That's a zero. Does that make sense? Now's the time to answer. Yes, no. Because the slope here, what's the slope here? It's zero, so it's, that's the derivative, which is the slope. So the derivative curve has to cross zero there. So that makes sense. So we have the derivative with respect to x. These are some things you're going to memorize of the sine of x is equal to the cosine of x. OK? Because you have to have comma x. No, another one. And this, this, this first x means you're going to see how this y value changes if you change x. The last x stands for I want to do it for every value in my domain. Oh, 
Well, let's find out. Give it what to say. And I, we don't necessarily need to do that, that to prove it. We can. You actually did it in the derivative lab. It would be up to you. So the question is, let's go back to our graphing calculator. What is the derivative of the cosine curve? So what I'm going to do is go here, y equals, and I'm going to change that to cosine. And I could prove it. That one is trickier to proving with the trig identity. And I know you didn't see those trig identities last year. I learned that. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and graph that. Oops, and graph. So here's going to come my cosine curve. You can see that. And here comes the derivative of the cosine. Is it the sine curve? It's the flip of it. They could do it. It's also a shift for it. But we're just going to make it negative sine. I'll take that picture and put it up here and I'll draw it. Okay, so let's see. Here's our cosine curve. And its derivative is right here. And the sine curve will look like this. This is the sine curve. Do you see how it's a reflection? The green one is minus. This is the opposite of the sine curve. The sine curve is negative here, and now it becomes positive. So let's throw that on there, too. And you're going to have to memorize these. And if you want me to prove it, I can. So the derivative with respect to x of the cosine curve is minus the sine curve. OK? When you do the derivative of all the cofunctions, they're always negative. The derivative of all the cofunctions. The cofunctions would be cosine of x, cosecant of x, and cotangent of x. These derivatives will always be negative. So that's kind of nice to know that. Do you want me to prove it? That the sine really is the cosine? I got one yes. OK, we have to go back to the definition of a derivative to do this. So f of x is equal to my sine of x. So using the definition of the derivative, it's the limit as h goes to 0. It's the sine of x plus h minus the sine of x. You actually did it at a particular point in your lab, all over h. There are no nice little tricks by multiplying by conjugates to get this to work. I have to use this identity up here. Sine of the sum of two angles can be written as the sine of one angle times the cosine of the other plus the cosine of the first angle times the sine of the other. And it's something uh, that's usually covered in pre-calc, but I guess it wasn't last year. So it's the sine of the first angle times the cosine of the second angle plus the cosine of the first angle times the sine of the second angle minus the sine of x all over h. I'm going to move that up in a second. Did I do it wrong? Yeah, sine of x, cosine h, cosine x, sine h, minus sine of x. And then I'm going to regroup them. Yes? You can use whatever formula you want, but this one's the one that works. The other ones may, I may work. I don't know. Now, I have to remember this old limit. There's two of them. The limit as h goes to 0 of the sine of h over h equals 1. I, I don't know if I need that one, but I know I get this one. And the limit as h goes to 0 of the cosine of h minus 1 over h. Remember what that one is? That's 0. So I'd like to get to that one. And the way to get to that one is to take these two, whoops, I guess I didn't do a good job there. Hang on. Is to take this one and this one. I'm going to regroup these. First, I'm going to rewrite it because I don't want to lose you. <laughs> so I'm going to do that. I'm just going to move it around a little bit. So it's the limit as h goes to 0, sine of x, cosine of h, 
minus the sine of x. So I'm just switching these two. That's all I'm going to do. Plus the cosine of x, sine of h, all over h. Oops, everything's all over h. I almost messed that up. Actually, it's not true. Ah. All over h. Now, h divides into every term there. Because I, I want to get to this one. Actually, I want to get to the other one as well. Because you can make this the limit of all these little sums. But what I'm going to do is take these guys together and factor out what? Yeah, I'm going to factor out the sine of x. So that's the sine of x, cosine of h, minus 1. And then this is plus the cosine of x times the sine of h. And I can distribute the h into each one of these. So I can put this over h. And I can put this one over h. I probably could have. I just thought it was easier for you to see it. That's the only reason I did that. OK, you there? I'm not expecting you ever to be able to do this. That's OK. Now, does the limit, as h goes to 0, does that affect the sine of x? She answered the question. No, it doesn't. We can pull this out. I can always do that, provided that's not the variable in question. So if you take multivariable calculus, it's going to come in handy. So I get this. And this is the cosine of h minus 1 all over h. Hmm. I know what that is. Plus, and then I'm going to distribute my limit because I'm allowed to do that. And again, I can pull that cosine of x out. It's times the sine of x, h over h. OK. What is this limit? Zero. So this one goes away. What is this limit? One, but it's times the cosine of x. Because I neglected to pull out and pull it out at the end. So there it is. There's the proof of why the derivative of the sine is the cosine. The cosine proof is very similar. You have to use a different trig identity. Unless you're looking, willing to look them up, I don't know they are. OK. What's the, ready for page two? Put the back side. What's the derivative of the cosine? Negative sine of x. What about the tangent? So guess what? We're going to do the tangent one. Let me slide some things around here. Give myself some space. OK, what is the tangent equal to? So y equals the tangent of x. You're going to memorize this after we do this. But what is this? This is the sine of x over the cosine of x. Remember that one. OK, Sam, Michael, remember that one? And guess what? We've got to take the derivative of that. So what's y prime? Remember, this is the quotient rule. So it's the denominator times the derivative of the numerator. What's the derivative of sine? Cosine or is it negative? This is cosine, right? And it's minus a numerator times the derivative of the denominator. What's the derivative of cosine? All the cofunctions are negative over the square of the denominator. Well, what happens in the numerator? I get cosine squared of x. What happens here? The two negatives make a plus sine squared of x. This is another identity you should know. Cosine squared plus sine squared equals <coughs> One. Did you see that last year? Okay. So this is one over the cosine of x squared. What's the reciprocal of the cosine? Do you remember what that one's called? Secant. So that's secant squared of x. Yes. And on your calculators, the question is, is cosine squared of x is the same as the cosine of x squared. On your calculator, you must use this form of the cosine squared. 
can't use the first form because it doesn't work. I don't know why it doesn't work. It seems to me it wouldn't have been that hard to do, but it, they don't. Okay, so let's fill this in. I'll have to do the close you can too. The derivative of the sine. Cosine. Derivative of the cosine. Negative sine. All the co-functions are going to be negative. So that's going to be negative. That'll be negative. The derivative of tangent is secant squared x. Okay. And actually, I know secant before I know cosecant. This is how I memorize it. Um, do you want me just to tell you, or because I think the homework is asking to show what it is. How would you find the derivative of the cosecant? The y equals the cosecant of x. What is that equal to? 1 over the y. What's cosecant? Sine of x. Excellent. So y prime is equal to the denominator times the derivative of the numerator. And please multiply that out, because that's not hard. Minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator. So it's 1 times the derivative of sine is cosine all over the denominator squared. I'm going to write it this way. Well, we don't usually write these as fractions. We change them all. So it looks like negative is cosine of x over sine of x times 1 over the sine of x. Are you okay with that? Those are the same things. All I did was, this is 0, so this goes away, and I just wrote it cosine over sine times 1 over sine. What's another name for cosine over sine? Cotangent of x. What's 1 over sine of x? By the way, I'll accept this. This is all perfectly acceptable. However, on the exam of multiple choice, you might have to have it in a certain form. What's 1 over the sine? Co cosecant. So the cosecant is minus co uh, cosecant of x. This is the way I memorize it. Cotangent of x. This is memorization, but you know how to find them if you have to. Why did I change what? There's nothing wrong with this answer. There's nothing wrong with it. Because we like to write them without fractions. So instead of cosine of right here. Co because what's cosine over sine? Oh, I just switched the order because that's why I memorized it. Because does anybody have an idea what the derivative of secant is? It's positive. That's right. Secant is secant of x times the tangent of x. I know secant, and from secant, I get cosecant. Yes. Negative sign's right here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, it's not. It's negative right here. Come here, show me, because I don't see what you're saying. Because it's all right. I don't think it's all right. Why is it negative here for this and then it's here for the other one? It's, oh, it's not a plus sign in between here. It's a time. Yeah. A negative 2 times 3 is the same as 2 times negative yeah, 3. I know. I just, like, we always put our negatives in front. Yeah, we always put our negatives in front. I just prefer to put my cosecant first. But you could have written it negative cotangent of x. Cosecant of x. There's nothing wrong with that. It's the same thing. This is not distributive property. This is associative and commutatives. That's why I was confused. Okay, if tangent is secant squared, what's the derivative of cotangent? Negative cosecant squared. You have to find a way for you to memorize it. They are all up here, some form up on my wall. And I leave them there all year. But on the exam, you don't get them. Because what do I have? Because these are antiderivatives, but that's just the same, which we'll, we'll figure out. It says, um, the antiderivative of secant squared is the tangent of x. And then I have the derivative, derivative of cosecant of x. So, but by the end of the year, these will all be okay for you. There's the derivative of cosecant, derivative of sine, derivative of cosine. 
It's whatever my students did for me is what ends up being. Okay. Oh, yeah, we have to find the second derivative of cosecant. We can do this. Let's do it. Now, do you remember what the first derivative is? What's the first derivative? It's up on the wall. What's the derivative of cosecant? So I do secant, so it's negative cosecant of x cotangent, right? So, and we're not going to simplify any of these derivatives when we do it again. What rule are we going to have to use here? What I like about the inspire is it makes you put the time sign in, or it puts it in. Because what rule is that going to be? Product rule. So y double prime, we're going to ignore the negative because it's just a constant. And then we're going to do the cosecant of x. I'm going to write it out times the derivative of the cotangent of x. And then it's what? Plus the cotangent of x times what? The derivative of cosecant. In this class, things are going to go like up and down. And if you're good at skills, this is going to be easy for you. Not concept. Concepts get to be hard. Okay, um, I'm just going to look them up. I'm not going to do the work. And don't simplify it. What's the derivative of the cotangent of x? Tangent is secant squared. This is a cofunction. So is it negative cosecant squared of x? Is that all? Yeah, that's all, right? Even I have to sit and think about it. Plus the cotangent of x. And what's the derivative of cosecant? We just did it. Negative cosecant of x times cotangent of x. But it helps to know that all the cofunctions are negative when you do the derivative. Okay, could we simplify it? Sure. Do I care? No. Yes? It's not only distributed to the cosecant. So let, let us simplify this. What happens to these two negatives? Yep, and how many cosecants do you have now? Okay, so we got cosecant cubed of x. You would have to match it on the multiple choice part of the test. And what have I got here? I've got a minus, right? I'll put the cosecant first. It doesn't matter. Order doesn't matter. And how many cotangents do we have? Cotangent times cotangent is cotangent. That's cotangent times cotangent. Cotangent squared. I know it's ugly looking. And then this is the graphing calculator problem. And I think it's similar to the post, which is the reason why it's here. That's it. That's all you, all you can do. Oh, I'm not going anywhere. I multiplied these out. These are plus signs. It separates these two terms in your expression there. So cotangent times cotangent is cotangent squared times a cosecant. Could you put cotangent squared first? Sure. It doesn't matter. <laughs> we don't have to do all this stuff. Should we do the calculator stuff of this thing? Find the equation of the tangent line at x equals negative 3. We're going to graph it. I'm going to still stay in the Turing window. Pardon? That was the second derivative. The first derivative, we just looked up on our charts there and said, oh, the first derivative of cosecant is negative cosecant x cotangent. No, I really didn't do any work for that either, except use the product rule. So just to make sure we can do this on our calculator, just to review it, you can find the derivative by hand. I'm convinced of that. Okay, so y equals, I'm going to, that's better, okay, so y equals, and what have I got, cotangent of x, ooh, how am I going to put that on my calculator? Yeah, it's 1 divided by the tangent. Okay, so if I have problems with fractions, I will just write that as 1 divided by tangent. Now, I think on the inspire, cotangents in your trig piece there, isn't it? I don't think you have to do this. 
Okay, I'm going to do that. That's the cotangent divided by x squared. Now, I know that everything's in the denominator, that that's 1 over tangent x squared, but that's okay. If we don't know that, it's not important. And we'll zoom it 7. I hope it doesn't work. I look at this. And I want to look at the tangent line at negative 3. Okay, so how do we do that? There's a couple ways to do it. Um, you can find the slope at negative 3 by going second, calculate, and dy dx. That's, remember, that's our derivative. That's our slope. That's 6. And then you can just type in negative 3. Negative 3. Won't give me the equation of the tangent line, but it will give me the slope. But if I'd like to get the tangent line, why don't we do that? So, I'm going to press graph. Let's clear that out. Are you ready? It's the draw menu. Second, draw. I want tangent line. It's right above program. Negative three. And it just doesn't draw a tangent. And there it is. So if I had my inspired calculator, it would be much prettier because it would be in color. <laughs> there. I just typed it in. Okay. There's my y equals. I can't put cotangent because it's not there. It's not there. I've got to do 1 divided by tangent divided by x squared. And then I go graph. Now it's drawn on there, but I would go second and then draw, which is above program. And I can do a vertical line, horizontal lines. I can draw tangent lines. Tangent lines are nice. And then I would tell it, I want to do this at negative 3. Just type it in. Otherwise, it won't be close enough. And it gives me the equation of the tangent line. And there it is. Hardly read it. Actually, I like this picture better. Let's look at this one. There it is. There it is. Negative. But look at that. The slopes match, right? There's your derivative. There's your derivative. There's your slope. Only two problems on the exam are with graphing calculators. Okay, so I mean, you guys know how to you know how to find the derivative of this. If you wanted to do this, you could do it. By, you have to use a quotient rule. I, want, I can do it if you want. Right here. Yep, it's the equation of the tangent line using the calculator. Now, I'm glad you asked that question. We will always keep three places. You can round if you want, or just truncate. I would just truncate. Just drop off after the third. And I'll be grading tests that way because we have to get used to it. Plus a negative 14.4, and I probably have to go figure out what the rest of those are on my calculator, but because there's more places there. <coughs> What is it? Oh, I forgot the X. Thank you. Okay. So this is what we're doing for Monday. The homework problems on 3.5. I don't spend only a half hour. Probably spend a half hour. <laughs> During the snowstorm. Um, and then Monday we're going to do the chain rule. And I'm going to get back to the test. Everything. It does get that way.